Hi coach, Andy Rowland here with USA Football, here with another Chalk Talk. This week we're lucky enough to have defensive coordinator Coach Wright from Northwest Missouri State. Today we're going to give the base look and some of the change up looks they use to challenge quarterbacks in the zone read game. Coach, take it away. Okay. Probably one of the, the first things that we're going to determine and against a zone read team is, and we'll put the Y over here, we go an 11 personnel look. First is, where are we going to get the back? If we can determine where the, where the back is, that helps us a lot. So we set the back here, um, and some teams are, are still using the offset back, some are going to the pistol. That'll determine a little bit of, of how we attack. But our base look is this. In our 4-2 front, okay, we're going to set the strength to the tight end. We're going to be head up, outside shade. We will, we will move this guy depending upon where the zone is hitting. We can play him anywhere from an inside gap. We also have another call I'll make here for you in a minute, but we'll just start with the open side end, okay? Now, Coach, a lot of the te teams, we want to put our three technique away from the back because we don't want that back attacking the bubble on the zone read. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. Perfect. So there's the first look, and, and the, more, the more the zone has a tendency to hit over here, the more we're going to leave our three over here on this side. So in our front, we're going to play Mike, we're going to play Buck, corner. We'll play, depending upon where we are as far as hash and stuff on the field, we may play a quarters concept back over here, a cover four look, and we may end up playing three to the field. So we'd have rover, we'd have corner over the top, the free, or excuse me, the strong sitting here, and the free sitting in a cover four scheme back to the back side. Now, first way that we're going to play this is we're going to play a feather technique with the defensive end, and we're going to allow the linebackers to play the dive. So as the zone goes to hit off and the quarterback is reading, Okay, the, the, the offensive tackle is down. He's climbing on to level two. We are going to sit and squat this with the defensive end. What we teach is as the visual key, we're visual key in the outside tip of the shoulder. His shoulder goes down. We're always taking a vertical position step. Our first step is always going to be vertical. So we're stepping vertical, outside or inside hand down, inside foot back. Yes, take a vertical step, get it down on the ground. What that does is it allows our backside foot, we're going to drag it through. So as we're getting ready and getting our feet in position to play the zone, as he takes off, I have my outside foot slightly back. We talk, one of the big things we talk about here is staying on the line of scrimmage. If the quarterback ends up pulling this thing, we talk about him having to eat up the vertical space. And the way I try and liken it to our kids is that we're running a race. And if we're running a race here, we, we're running a race out to the sidelines, but he has to eat up the vertical distance in here. We're not going to eat up the vertical space. That's going to give us what we need to do from a speed perspective to be able to run with these quarterbacks. We want to stay, we don't want to push up. We want to stay flat. So as he comes through and he starts to go, I want to sit on top of him. And so the relationship that we talk about is that you're going to actually move outside of me. I'm going to allow you, I'm not going to try and roll out over the top of you because I don't want to give you the ability to cut back. Yep. I want to spill everything to the sideline and let our speed people play over the let top. Let them run. Now, so that feather technique you talked about, that's going to be that slow play, cat and mouse as he kind of moves down the line. Absolutely. Give him something to look at, be able to redirect with that back foot back so he's able to attack the outside edge. Absolutely. Now, you know you have some help from your safety out here right now. And now talk to me about this, this background on the inside. If he knows this guy's going to close this and play slow, is he a downhill he's fast guy? He's a downhill guy? fast guy. He's playing. These guys, when we talk about our base technique, these four guys are zone players. Yep. So they're playing, they're playing tough, playing on the zone, playing gap control football. Gotcha. So you're playing really, you got your zone plays here, you've got your read play here. So you're really splitting and you're saying, hey, you're going to play what's on your front side, you're playing what's on your front side, and we're going to let our guys exactly. play football. Exactly. That's great here. Now, second thing that will happen. Now, depending upon, this is on a play where the zone has a tendency to stay on track going here. Now, some offenses, what they'll start to do with this thing is they'll try and put some pressure on you back here on the back side. And so what's going to happen is that zone's going to hit really vertical here on the back side. And we talked about that one technique sitting mm -hmm. here. The first adjustment we'll make, we'll, we'll make what we'll call, um, we call it dog. And all dog means is we're going to set the four technique, to, or, or what you guys call three, we in our terminology call four, we're going to set that to wherever the back is. Because now, and what we'll do is we'll G the nose, yes. He'll go here, 
And when he say G the nose coach, just for some of our younger coaches, you mean we're going to put him on the inside shade Correct. of the guard. So Correct. he's still an A-gap player, yes. but his alignment is eating up some of that guard. Absolutely. We're going to try and take as much of the guard as we possibly can. We're still going to leave this guy in a head-up shade, but now what we're going to do is we're going to protect this linebacker. Yep. If they're trying to hit this thing really tight downhill, we're going to protect this linebacker with the two defensive linemen. Now, this tackle doesn't get out on a free release because of the alignment of the defensive tackle. The second thing that happens, and sometimes the real big challenge on the replay, is with a one technique, as I showed you, as we take that step, we've got to close down that window from the defensive end's perspective. And if that keeps moving, that yes, can bring your defensive that, end dragging a long way. Right, and now you get susceptible to the quarterback keeping back out exactly. on the outside. So now by moving this guy here, now what you've done is you've really allowed him to just sit. You've made a nice hard edge for your defensive end to play strong and square. Right, you're going to let, you're going to let the buck play over the top in here into the A-gap. You, the way we visual key this, we're going to be real firm in here, and now Mike's just cleaning up trash if, if it gets to the outside. And similar to our earlier talk, we still have four guys here playing the zone. Right. You still have your backside playing the read on the quarterback, only now we've widened that tackle, so we're giving ourselves a lot more space into that boundary, giving him less room to go, making his life easier. He's got to be a happy man. Absolutely. The, the more that, and it's just little simple adjustments. You know, the thing, you don't have to do a lot of exotic things to give an offense a change up. Sometimes the more fine the adjustment, the, the more effective it can be. The next thing we can do, okay, and again, real simple, is we make what we call a hammer call, all right? And you hammer two, and we can also call fire, but we'll say, ha we'll say it's just hammer for right now. Now, on the, on the snap, wherever the back shows up, all right, the defensive end is going to attack mesh. Now, we are dive players, so I'm going to, I'm going to go attack the back quick. I've got him. Wherever this shows up, I'm the dive player. All right, I'm still playing dive. I'm still playing dive. We widen his alignment a little bit, he and he now becomes tight. the quarterback player. And when he scrapes tight now, he's still going to use that same feather technique. So we talked about earlier, your, your whole defense is using the same terminology. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Absolutely. And again, really important point for the coaches. Not only am I changing the front, but then I can also change the quarterback's vision. Instead of always seeing end, now he see end go, his read, he's his pull, mm -hmm. and I got a backer running off the tight. Now with, with this, you can call it to either side, yes. with either front where yep. you have the bubble, mm -hmm. or you have the three technique tackle. Absolutely, it doesn't make any difference. So even with a one technique, this is fairly effective. So you've got the nose here, we've got the tackle here, back to the original alignment that we talked about, okay? So we're sitting here like this, and now what we have is, is again, that's down, and this guy is anticipating blocking the buck backer. Well, we're coming right off his tail, and now the buck's working out to the quarterback. Now, we will take this a step further. We will actually rock all three backers back into this thing. That's another look that we have, but probably there's a lot more coaching involved in that. So let's just stick with this. It's a very simple read and a very simple adjustment. But I think the important point for, for the coaches and part of your success is being able to give the quarterback different looks at different times. If you give any quarterback the same look every play, I might as well just be throwing fastball down the middle every time. He's going to catch up to it. If I can give him a changeup, if I can give him different looks, we as a defense have gator transfer indecision, which means we can penetrate and make the play what we want. And obviously by the championship this year, it's shown to be extremely successful. Absolutely. Coaches, we thank you for joining us again. Two great ways to either adjust your front and adjust the backer defensive end assignment to give zone read quarterbacks a different look. Slow down that attack by making them have a pause on the mesh and get your defense moving forward versus those high-speed offenses. We thank you for joining us this week. As always, good luck.